Hey mom, watch! No hands! Oh. No! My baby! Oh, what happened? What happened? I just lost control of my bike and crashed! Only skinned my knee a little bit! Nothing too bad! Jesus H. Christ! My little baby! That's out. it! No more bike riding for you! Not today! Not ever! Mom, it doesn't hurt too bad! I love my bike! I just fell! It happens! That's it! I'm getting you a car! Wow! Cool! I did not bring you into this world in order for you to be exposed to anything dangerous! I lost my figure for you! I ruined your father's life with my nagging! I will not see you die on some outdated contraption! I won't! I won't! I won't! I will protect you in any way I can! It's a mother's duty. I love you, Mom. Well, you need a car. We'll remortgage the house or do whatever it takes. I want you safe. And what better protection than an overpowered sports coupe you can drive when first experimenting with drinking and drugs? The teenage years can be difficult and dangerous. Don't make them deadly. Don't let your teenager ride a bicycle. Be a mother, not a murderer. This is a public service announcement paid for by the Governor's Office of San Andreas in association with My Batsu Cars of America. I love If people could please just attempt to make sense, that's all I'm asking. Last night, as I was laying in my pod meditating, and it occurred to me, why are you even listening to me? Turn off all electrical devices, including your radio. Hector in San Garcia, why are you still listening? Because I was hoping you could explain these noises. What noises? God, not you too. Now think about the things we talked about today. Think, seriously think. Can it be real? Can it be false? We'll see you next time in Area 53. Be careful out there, wherever you are. That was Area 53. We're sorry. Deal with your ignorance in one minute flat. Complex issues in 60 seconds. WCTR. The day of liberation is here. Throughout history, only the biggest and strongest survive. Being big means you're successful, and women love big men. Kilimanjaro. And as a successful man, you need to feel comfortable when you're sitting down to eat. Kilimanjaro. Close for the bigger man. Don't be bound by society, bogus medicine, and the media with their unhealthy focus on being skinny. Don't be constrained by trying to squeeze into a triple X. Bored of feeling like a man in a sausage skin in your size 48 jeans? Bored of being uncomfortable? Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro, the clothes shop for enormous men. We're fighting to end hunger. Yours. Kilimanjaro. If you love to hear liberals whine and conservatives lecture, then stay tuned for I Say You Say. The future of America, threatened again. This time we mean it. I'm Dr. Phillips. And I'm also Dr. Phillips. Today on the show, do cave paintings in museums make us violent? The anti-beef movement. Both Hitler and Mussolini were vegetarians. And we take on the highly charged debate about test tube babies and actually talk to one. I have flashbacks and go into hysterics in science class. Do you know what it's like growing up in a beaker? That's all today on I Say, You Say. We share last names, but that's about it. I'm Peyton, that's my wife Mary, and this is I Say, You Say, where left is right and right is wrong. Or we're East meets West, and the West always wins. 
That wall came down, darling. Yes, unfortunately it did. I, I don't know if you saw today's news, so who is in the right in this great dialectical disaster? Is it, as I think, a case of share and share alike? Love your fellow man and all wear matching jumpsuits while working on a collective hydroponic farm growing potatoes? Or kill or be killed, crush the weak, and starve the poor, as my wonderful wife thinks. You decide, or let us decide for you. Give us a call, and let my wife, a professor in social Darwinism, or me, a lecturer in pointless anthropology, that work things me. out. That's the problem with liberals. They don't know when to shut up and enjoy freedom. Let's go to the phones. Uh, yeah, hi. Here's the deal. I'm really funny, but nobody wants to hire somebody funny. I, I mean, how is that fair? I, I mean, I'm white, middle class, very erudite. Um, you know, whatever that means. But people just respond badly to me. I, I don't understand it. Are you related to my husband? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't think so. I hope not. Have you got a question about politics? Yeah, sure. I know a lot about politics. Hey, can I do your job? You know, I used to be on the radio back in the day. Even my husband can't do his job, you strange, pathetic little sap. <laughs> Let's have a real caller, please. Hi, my name's Michelle. I'm a first-time caller to the show. I wanted to know what you guys thought about the proposition to ban smoking. Well, this is a simple issue. Smoking. Democracy at work again in our state. Seems like a good thing when you first look at it, but democracy only works when you agree with it. Then it's best to favor a totalitarian state. I'm not sure about this one. I think smoking is an invasion of my body, and I've always wanted to shoot people. I'm right behind the proposition. Me too. Thanks, Michelle. I also wanted to say hi to my stepbrother, Phil, who's been undergoing a hair transplant today. Hey, Phil, if you're listening, I hope it's six this time. I won't tell anyone you've got plugs, honey. I'm really proud of you. That's great, honey. But if you want shout-outs, call the rap station. That's offensive. And I'm really offended by what you're saying. I'm a smoker. This used to be a free country. When? <laughs> Good point, Dolly. God, you're good. Yes, good point. But remember, our founding fathers grew tobacco. It relaxed them between stressful stints of genocide and witch burning. And you're so against raising taxes, smokers pay more taxes than anyone. My grandfather smoked his whole life, <laughs> and he lived until he was 32. So what I'm saying is, why can't we encourage more smoking and use the money to pay for better health care and some cultural programs, bringing expressive dance and sun worship back to the inner cities? Worrying about the inner city has ruined your academic career, and this woolly thinking is going to ruin your chances of getting anywhere with me tonight. Promise? The thing is, smoking is good because it lets people make a lot of money, but so is selectively culling the population. So what I'm proposing is a change in the proposition. Let people smoke, but make cigarettes much cheaper and force everyone to smoke. That way we weed out the weak, make a lot of money in tax, and keep our national heritage intact. Line two, you're on I Say, You Say. Ah, I listen every time to your show. It really made me think about the world the whole new way. I moved out of the city because it sucks. Now I live in a compound surrounded by barbed wire and shoot and kill anyone I don't recognize on my land. Just want to say thank you. That's some quality broadcasting. Yeah, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better about myself. Have you got a question? Yeah, I got corpses from 15 illegal immigrants in my yard. I killed them all myself with my bare hands. Could I get a tax break for all this unpaid work? Good question. I would certainly hope so. Ask your accountant if you can register them as dependents. Then hide most of your net worth offshore in a complex money laundering system designed to support the drugs trade. Then you can pay virtually no taxes and complain about how awful you think the whole country is, knowing you're doing as little as possible to help. Cool, thanks. That's good advice. I'm appalled at you, Mary Phillips. Ugh, why? Because that man has a garden full of corpses and you're talking about money laundering. Yes, it's a great opportunity for some profit-centric thinking. You missed a wonderful opportunity to talk about recycling and organ donation. Oh, God, give me strength. I married a fool. I married a fool. You know, when we first met, Peyton, I thought you were so glamorous mm -hmm. with your long hair and big ideas. You were studying for a PhD in cultural ceramic history or mm -hmm. cross-cultural underwear or something, and I was very young. Very foolish. Mm -hmm. Now I see you for what you are. And what's that exactly? An intellectual cesspit. A middle class hey, disaster. Up. A guilt trip wrapped in neuroses and completely unable to function in this society. No wonder I've begun to sleep around. And on that note, we have to go visit our marriage therapist. There was a conniving bitch and won't write me any more prescriptions for painkillers. Remember, when the left wing and the right wing come together, <laughs> the country can really get going. Straight off a cliff. We'll see you next time.
boy, I can't imagine what those guys are like in the bedroom, but I'm sure it's a bit like the Bay of Pigs. That was I Say You Say. Lager, the beer that brought the forest down. I drive an exotic imported sports car. I eat exotic foreign food like frankfurters and pizza. But when it comes to numbing my mind, I'm a patriot. I drink the beer that brought the forest down. I'm a lager man. And with the new 80 bottle trunk pack, you've got enough for the evening. Last night, I crapped in my bed and pissed in the closet. Hey, it's happy hour somewhere. Lager brings out the patriot in you. Have you heard the number one gardening show in San Andreas? If not, here's what you're missing. Well, why don't you just go buy your vegetables at the grocery store then, you sycophant? God, I just don't understand people. You go to hell. Well, screw you too, Mom. See if you're ever on the show again. Next caller, hello. Yeah, what's that plant that blooms every 12 years? Is it for high and smells like hell? I want to plant one on my ex-wife's lawn. It's called Amorphophallus titanium. God, I love to say that. Amorphophallus titanium. And the sound of it gives me a redwood oh, in my what khakis. The shit? If I come back as a superhero, I want to be called that. I it's Amorphophallus titanium, the rare botanical wonder. See his eight-foot protrusion as he pollinates on everyone. But why does it stink so bad? It's about marking your territory, my man. You don't mark your territory, do you? You should try it. Pee on the front door of your office. Just see if anybody thinks of coming near you. Okay, I, I'll, I would try that. Thank you so much for the advice, Maurice. Oh, I'm here to help, sailor. Gardening with Maurice, only on WCTR. If you're into exploring exotic places and forbidden fruit, stay tuned. It's The Wild Traveler, next. Support for The Wild Traveler is brought to you by the Ultimate Disc in the Dark Association of America, who encourages you to get out and play hard. Hello, I'm James Badiston, world traveler, and this is the Wild Traveler. We're discussing the world and all of its many pleasures. Let me put it like this. Why have a hot dog from an uncaring vendor by the bathroom when you can attend a beer-guzzling marathon in Germany with enormous men and taste a wonderful German's wurst? The world is full of incredible things, and you can discover them for yourself. Come along, I'll take you there. It was dusk and the sun bled red over the city in Thailand as Chen brought me a sparkling water. A delicate, handsome, lovely young boy. A world of possibilities. But war is folly and we can only unite by visiting these epochs of culture where a man can be himself, smoke cigarettes, Dress in gladiator clothing, if he likes. We mustn't force our way and culture upon other peoples. Rather, breathe it in. Become part of it. Maybe Hemingway was right about love. Maybe Freud was. We're all fighting inside to let a wild creature mate in the rain. I travel, therefore I am. This is a show that embraces culture from around the world. Let's take our first caller. Hello? Yeah, I totally agree with you about Australia. And you're right, the moon is shit. Also, I was thinking of visiting Colombia. Do you have any recommendations? Oh, yes, fantastic forms of recreation to be had in Colombia. It's a blizzard of excitement. And cheap? The rails are great and long. <laughs> Bolivia's not bad either. Or Peru. You'll be surprised to find out how the party never you, stops. Taxi. How's the food? Well, a lighter is the most you need to cook up food. Uh, but... There's scarcely time to eat, my boy. You'll meet fascinating people, feel so comfortable, you'll rip your clothes off and howl for days. Next caller. Yeah, hi. My name's Geraldine, calling from Casa City. This is such a great country. Why would you go anywhere else? It's unpatriotic to travel. I mean, I got war, famine, depression, and pollution right here on my doorstep, and parents... Don't let kids your rail after college. They'll come back with ludicrous misconceptions about healthcare, charity, and civilization. Europe is not the real world. This is. Well, I love to slum about in a dirty youth hostel with communal showers as much as the next man. Sometimes more. But I have to agree. Europe is overrated.